her in. I'll tell you what makes this, well, it's always really, it's really this way always. It's this way all the time. But we, we are, we're in a position and it's good, it's a good place to be in. We have to uh, live what we say we believe. In other words, if you said uh, it's a good boat and got no hole in it, you're gonna have to get in and well out there. Not really. You got <clears throat> that's that's where we are, but it's good. It's good. It's 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 good. It's really it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. God has a wonderful word for us today because, and He always has a good. God always has a good word. There's no such thing as a bad word from God. It's a good word. But we want to talk about protection from battle. Protection for battle. Um, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the downfalls, the pitfalls that I see with the believers today, and and this is just an ongoing thing, and I've, it's, I'm, 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 all of us in the same boat, but I think one of the things that 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 that's, that's kind of sticks out is that we don't, I don't know if we realize that we are at war. Amen. If you think that you're in peacetime when it's really wartime, it, it can kind of broadside you. But we are in battle. We are on, a, we are on the battlefield. And, and, that's, and I know, you know we, we say that and we preach it, but do we believe it? Do we really believe that we're on a battlefield? I think sometimes the way we carry on, we don't really believe it. We think, yeah, well, no, we just, that's just good church talk. No. No. Over in uh, First Peter, in in First Peter chapter four, and and here's what the Word of God says. God says, uh, <clears throat> "Beloved," verse twelve. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. Now, I know nobody here is guilty of that. But, you know, I mean, you know, all of a sudden, you know, everything go, ballistic, go belly up, and you wonder, what happened? Right. Hey, dude, you're on a battlefield. Amen. No, really, God reminds us. He said, why do you think it's strange? And then I, I, I've, I've talked to people, that, you know, sometimes counseling with them. And they, they want to know why this happened, why that happened. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Deal with it. <laughs> now, that sounds cold, but it's the truth. Because I have to do the same thing. Amen. And then I've heard this one. I'm, I'm sure everybody have heard this one. Now, watch this. Here's a, here's a good one. I'm sure everybody has heard it. Why does bad things happen to good people? <laughs> Is that <everybody> guilty? <laughs> what? Are you a Christian? Well, why would you ask a question like that? Because the minute you receive Jesus Christ, you step out on the battlefield. In other words, you step out on the battlefield. There's a devil that don't like you. He hates you. And he's going to do everything he can to destroy you. But here's the good news that I have for you. You have been given authority over your enemy. Amen. You don't have to wait till the battle is over to know who's going to win. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm going to win. Amen. There's no question about my winning. There's no question about it. Now, will I have to, yes, fight because God here again, God's word tells me, over in First Peter, First Timothy, you know what I mean, six twelve. He said, "Fight the good fight of faith." So if God tells me to fight, then why do I think I don't have to fight? No, no. no you're going to have to fight. I think what happens is I think sometimes we, you know, we people get the, they misunderstand Christianity. They say, "Well, I want to be a Christian. I want to go to heaven when I die." Good, good. You're going to do that, but you're going to have to fight while you're still here. Right. You know, it's kind of like where I went to school. Fighting wasn't on the curriculum, wasn't a part of the curriculum, but you had to fight. <laughs> they were not part of the curriculum. 
but fighting was just as normal as his arithmetic was. Amen. Somebody, somebody gonna fight. Yeah. If you don't think so, just wait till recess. <laughs> but as kids now, they don't have recess no more, I don't think. I don't know what, the, I, don't know. I don't know what they do in school now. But we had what you call recess. Then we had two of them. We had little recess and big recess. Yeah. Little recess, that's last about, by about maybe 15 minutes. But then the big recess, but then, no, we got better than that. <laughs> Depending on how long the teacher wanted to take a nap, how long it took her to get a nap out. <laughs> no, I don't think they slept that much. But, but we, it was a good long one. It was a good long one. And sure enough, you're going to get a fight in some night during that time. All you got to do is see, once you see a crowd, there's a fight going on, just go get in it. But, but I say that to help us to understand, dear, 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 dear sisters and brothers, uh, we're in a battle. We're in a battle, and God makes it very clear. He says, you know, we, you are, he said, don't think it's strange. He says, beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. Mm -hmm. You get that? Try you. Uh -huh. it's, it's to try you. You know, a new kid comes to school, and somebody's going to try him. That's right. Just as sure as he comes to school, just as sure as, sure as he comes to school, somebody's going to try him. You know, Jesse, Jesse, you probably use in on that. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to try you. That's right. Well, God said, don't, don't think it's strange when somebody, when you are tried. Because somebody's going to try you. The devil is going to try you, and he's going to use somebody to do it with. Oh, yeah. Isn't, you know, the devil, he, he, he hides. By, he hides. Mm. And he works through people. Yes, you see. And, he, and somebody, just as sure as somebody, so God said, don't, 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 don't think it's strange. Don't think it's strange. Now, I want to show you something else before we move into this. Look at Revelations chapter number 12. Because it, once we understand that we have an adversary, then all we have to do is learn how to fight him. We've got to learn how to, you know, how to fight the good fight of faith. We got to learn how to fight, how to stand against the enemy that comes against us. And this is every day, every believer. You're going to have to. This is where you are. And so, but but God's going to show us some things today about uh, the some of the resources that we have at our disposal, because you have been given everything that you need to win. But you have to learn how to use that weaponry and that weapon system that God has provided for us. And you're going to have to do it. There's no question about it. I, I wish I could say, well, you know, everything will be nice for you, but no, it's not. It's not nice for me. It's not nice for anybody. I haven't seen anybody that was a Christian that everything just worked, everything just fine. No, no problem. No, no, but, but here again, the, 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 when, the more you understand and learn battle strategies, the easier it will be for you. Now, you see what God told us in, in, first, in Peter. Now, if you do think it's strange, if you think it's strange when somebody calls you a funny name, you think it's strange, you wonder, why do they do that? <laughs> if everything is strange to you, you're going to have a real problem. You, I'm trying to help you know what it is. And God will teach you, he'll show you what the problem is, but you're still going to have to fight. Amen. Now, over in Revelation, Revelation chapter number 12, and God, he, he really unveils, he pulls the cover off the devil. This scripture text un undressed the devil. It, it, put, it exposes him so you can see exactly what he is. What he is. In Revelation chapter 12, let's pick up at the verse, first verse. Not the first verse, the seventh verse. Pick up at the seventh verse. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. See, he, this thing, he was in heaven. See, see, he wasn't always bad like that. He wasn't always like that. This guy, he wasn't like that all the time. But the Bible says the iniquity was found in him. I, don't, I still don't understand all that, but, but I'll just tell you what the Bible says. Amen. Iniquity was found in him, and then he got to cutting up up there in heaven. Now, you've got, you got to have a lot of nerve. 
Now you think about that. I mean, come on, he knew, he, you, you got to know who God is. But for some reason, he got some strange idea that he could overthrow God. You read it about it over in, in, in Isaiah, I think he talked about it. I will exalt my throne above the most high. So the Man, what are you talking about? You're crazy. <laughs> no, he, I'm, t I'm telling you how absent-minded he is. He had the strange idea that he could take over and then started his coup. And then God had to deal with him. And that's what, they, that's what you see here beginning in that seventh verse there in, uh, in, 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 in Revelation 12. When God released his generals on him and, and told him, get that thing out of here. Get him out of here. Because, you know. But then, but, then, but then, listen, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. And they did not love their lives to the death. That's the way you're going to have to be it off. You're going to overcome. Yeah. Therefore, rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. That's us right now. And the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. That's why I want you to see. Why I'm going to see why you got to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. You understand this? Amen. This is why you and I have to fight the good fight of faith. Now, you, the word have already been spoken. You will overcome him if you, you, if you put together the, 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 the battle strategies that God has given you to put together and fight with him. And learn how to fight the good fight. You'll overcome. The Bible says we overcome him by the word of the, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony. Yes, so the blood's already been shed, so that sells it. I'm already belong, I belong to God. And now my mouth, the words of my mouth is going to cut him from one side to the other. Are you still here? Amen. I say that to help us to understand that you're not going to just get born again and then everything will just happen, everything, you just sit around, drink Kool-Aid and eat cake. It's not like that. It's not like that. Dear God, dear friends, it's not like that. Now, you can do that. You can have a good life, and I, and I fact, I have one. But you're going to have to learn how to acquire that life. Yeah, now, God has given us all of the weaponry that we need yeah. in order to overcome. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you still here? Yeah, we are world overcomers. You're going to have to get that language inside of you. I am an overcomer. I'm not a loser. I don't fail. I can't fail. Amen. I can only fail if I allow myself to fail. Amen. God has given us authority over in Luke's gospel. You see it in the 10th chapter thing in the 19th verse. God said, God said I give you authority to trample on serpent and scorpion. Yes, yes the same devil that Michael threw out of heaven, I have given you authority to trample on him. And over everything that he controls. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, that is the word of God. Now, we as believers are now spirit beings. We don't live by the might of the flesh, but we live by the power of faith. Which is the result of knowing the word of God. The word of God is to go into the heart of the human and out of that mouth speaks words of faith that crushes every devil that could rise up against you. Amen. My dear friends, that's the way it's done. Amen. If you sit around and whine and belly and tell me, why, why me, why me, why me, I tell you, it's going to always be you. Because the devil going to say, there's a good one there. And I'm telling you, no, really, he don't just, he don't just leave you just because you, I mean, the worst thing you can do is whine and feel sorry for yourself. And I, and, and I said this because I think sometimes people think I'm mean. But I'm not mean. But I know feeling sorry for you is not going to help you. Amen. It's going to do you more harm than good. Right. And particularly when people that have gone through it and they, they're whining and, and I don't know. And, and you know but, that, but that don't help you. I'm telling you, the devil likes that. Yes, sir. That's food for the devil. He likes to see you like that because he will, he will just, he'll just rip you apart. But when you rise up and stomp your foot, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and he see you looking like that, boy, he can't go the other way. Because he knows some faith coming out of your mouth and he can't handle that. 
He was, that's the way, that's the way. But you, but if you, if you, you got to have that kind of, that's the attitude, that's the winning attitude that you're going to have to have. Amen. Now, let's go to the Word of God. I want you to show you something here. The, God has provided all the protection that you need. Now, dear Christian friends, you're going to have to believe that. You, 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 the, the, the power of, and the victory that you and I are going to operate in on this earth is going to be the result of how much of the word of God you choose to believe. Amen. Religion won't do anything for you. It's the word of God that you're going to have to hear and believe and speak out of your mouth that's going to allow for you to be victorious. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's nothing on this earth that can dominate you. Amen. Nothing. Dear God, you got you to get that. Don't, don't, don't get so world-minded that you get to acting like the world because the world, they don't know nothing. They have scared and they don't know nothing. They run around telling lies and carrying on. They don't know much. Don't act like them. Amen. You get on the word of God and you feed that word into your heart. Yeah. You, get, you become tunnel vision. All I want to know is what God says. All I want to know is what God says. Yeah. I'm just, no, I don't, want a little bit of, I don't want a little bit of flesh and a little bit of God. I want all of God. I don't want no flesh. Because I'm telling you, if you let the devil push in one half an inch, he's going to take, he's going to elbow and take some more. You don't need to know what's going on. He said, well, 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 I need to know. No, you don't. Amen. You need to know what the word of God says. Yes, right. I know what's going on. They sinned. Amen. They always did. But the word of God will never get you through victory. Amen. Please get a hold to that. You got to get a hold. See, you're going to see the Bible will change you. It changed me, and it's still changing me. That's why, I, and I realize, and I know sometimes, I know sometimes people can't quite handle me. I know that, and I, and I, you know, I know, I know that, but it don't. But it's not. A, I don't see that as something negative. But I, I just, but I can't, I can't reverse just because people don't mi misunderstand. I, I can't do that. See, watch this. Any time that you step off behind Jesus, you run the risk of being misunderstood. Amen. Don't forget that. Anytime you embrace Jesus Christ, you run the risk of being misunderstood. I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you will, be, if you will put more of God in and, and filter more of the world out, the quality of your life is going to elevate. Amen. Amen. You need more of God and less world. That's right. More of God and less world. We are not of the world. We're not of the world. We're of God. We are of God and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How many believe that? Yes. You see what I mean? See, greater is you got to, yeah. Well, the, great, the, the greater one lives inside of me. The greater one lives inside of me. And so I live like that and I act like that. You see, see, the, see what you believe will determine what comes out of your mouth. And what comes out of your mouth will determine what you do. Amen. I don't have to ask anybody about no faith. I don't have to ask. No, I, don't have to ask no, I meet people all the time. I meet people. I, 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 I meet new people. on. I, I play golf. And I meet guys on the golf course. I don't have to ask that they got any faith. But by the time you get out about the ninth or tenth hole, I know exactly what the guy is. <laughs> I don't have to ask him a word. No, that's the truth. I don't have to ask him. I have to ask him. All I got to do is just listen to them. Listen to them. I listen to them. I listen to them. And I know exactly where they are. You understand what I mean? See, see, God, see the word of God in your heart will bring certain words out of your mouth. Yeah, amen. And the words that come out of your mouth are going to determine victory or, 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 or defeat. There's no question about that. You are the, your life is the sum total of the words of your mouth. Amen. Amen. Your life. Whatever quality of life you're living is the toll of the words of your mouth. Amen. There's, no, there's no good, bad, or indifferent. I don't care what, what, what it is. Whatever comes out of your mouth, everything you own, everything you possess, everything you do, is a result of your words. Yeah. You know, the wife that you are married to would never have happened had you never, had you never opened your mouth. No, really, that's the truth. The husband that you're married to, you would never be married to him if you never opened your mouth. 
the clothes that you're wearing, you will not have those clothes on if you never open your mouth. If you don't say, if you think that's not true, just walk in there, go down to Mason, and just don't say a word when you go in there. Don't say a word, don't touch a thing. And see what you come out with. Nothing. You never said nothing. You never did anything. No, no, really, come on. It's amazing how we're the sum total of our words. Everything that I am, everything that I am is a result of my mouth. This is my wife here for 40 some odd years. Because I opened my mouth. No, really. If I never opened my mouth, I wouldn't even know who she was. No, but that's the truth. But it's, it's such a simple principle that we don't think about it. Well, your victory or defeat is determined by the words of your mouth. Your health is a result of your mouth. You say, is it? Yes. My son, attend to my words. Don't let them profit your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. You see that? Your health is a result of the contents of your heart. Praise God. Your health is not down in shot, right, right, Abe? Your health is right here. Amen. Here's your health right here. Now, now, now people will fuss me. They'll fuss at you about that. I'm just, people will fuss at you. Oh, well, now, come on. You too far out there. I'm not far as I'm going. <laughs> No, really, but we, we have to break through. We got to break through that, we got to break through that flesh veil. Break out of that flesh veil and move over there into the glory arena. God, I want the Christians over in the, in the, in the Shekinah arena. That's where I want us to be. God, that's where the victory is. As long as you're living out of your head, you're living in defeat. You want to live in victory, you're going to have to live out of your heart. Amen. The abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Yes. Whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent. Yes. And whatever's in the heart is determined by what you put in it. Yes. You put the word, you put God inside of you, God's coming out of your mouth. Yes. And there is, no, there is no defeat in God. Ain't a devil in hell that got the audacity to stand up to God. Amen. Paul, there in the book of Acts, pressure was on. Mm. The devil out there killing, throwing, kicking people around, fighting people, stripping them out the clothes and all of that. Yeah. Those sons of Sebas. And then admitted, the devil admitted, well, I know Paul. I know Jesus. Mm -hmm. But who are you? Do the devil know you? Only you know that. You know you, you, you got to know that. You, because because he, ain't, he ain't coming. Listen, if he know you, he ain't coming around you. He going to walk right around you. No, you know, really, he will. I'm telling him because he knows you. Because you have established yourself in the word of God. Once you have established yourself in the word of God. Then, the, then the, red, the words, see, the words of your mouth determine the quality of your life. Yeah. The words of your, and when you put the, see, the word of God is living. You read it over in Hebrew. We don't need to go, Hebrew 4, 4, 4, 12, I think it is. You put it on the board. Hebrew, the, the word of God is what? Living, living. It's powerful. Look at that. For the word of God is what? Living. And it's powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerning of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The power of the word of God drives demons out of your life. The power. So, but, so, where is the, so where does the word have to be? The word has to be put inside of you, in your heart. In your, when we talk about the heart, we're not talking about the blood pump. We're talking about your, the core of your being, your spirit. 
When you feed the word of God into your spirit, when you keep hearing, faith come by how? Hearing and hearing. And you keep hearing the word of God. Faith come by hearing. And you're hearing the word of God. And it's getting down into your consciousness. And then your speech become the result of the words inside of you. Dear God, you talked away what's inside of you. But if you got trash and foolishness in your heart, then trash and foolishness are going to come out of your mouth and you're going to be a defeated foe. Faith in God's word Amen. calls us to win mm -hmm. in this battle that we're in every day. It's a way of life, feeding the word of God. And, I, and, I, and this, is, this is so easy. Listen, and I say this, and we always preach it. Make it a practice of feeding the word of God in, the, in your spirit. It should be a daily diet, just like, just like you end up eating breakfast in the morning. You eat every day, physically, you know, we we'll eat spiritually daily. Feed the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Feed it, read it, hear it, put it inside of you. And now with all of these devices you got, you know what I mean? You can just have it going all the time. You know what I mean? You got them things hanging out your ears and, and whatever, you know what I mean? And, and your car and everything is all streaming and everything. You know what I mean? You no, know, no, put the word in there. And you hear it. Now when your word goes into your heart, you hear it all the time. And then it's going to come out. Victory is going to come out of your mouth and you're going to live victorious. But if you got the trash going in there, which a lot of, you know, if you got trash going in, trash, that a trash, that a trash, that a trash, that a trash, fear, fear, trash, fear, trash, news, lies, fear, trash, news, all day, every day, all day, fear is coming out of your mouth, and you're going to be a miserable cuss. Amen. You're going to be miserable, you're going, and you can't help it. I don't care who you are. If you feed trash, if you feed fear into your heart, Fear is coming out of your mouth, Amen. and you can't help it, and fear will kill you. Yeah. Graveyard dead. It will. No, you, that's, 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 that's what I'm telling you people, that, that's the way it is. And so, understanding these principles, now what it gives you an opportunity to do, you decide what you're going to do. When you go out of here today, you decide what you're going to do. You're going to decide whether, am I going to listen to trash? Am I going to listen to news? Am I going to listen to this? Am I going to listen to that? You determine, because whatever you listen to, that's what you're going to believe, and that's what you're going to do, and that's what's going to determine what kind of life you live. That's the, way, that's, the, that's the way the system works. You, me, and no one else is going to change that. Of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak, and you'll have whatever you say. You'll have what you say. You will have what you say. Three things I want to look at. The call of God that's placed on you, the, God, the fact that God has equipped you, and thirdly, that God has protected you. God's children are never left alone. Amen. If you're a Christian, you are never left alone. Now, now, now that, that, that will bless you within itself. Listen, if you are a Christian, Jesus never leaves you. He said it in his word. In fact, I'll, I'll show it to you. Also, it's uh, Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Watch this. For he himself, that's Jesus, has said, I will what? I will, I will, I will never. Now, now can you believe that? Now, now, why would you be, now is Jesus, Jesus is just amazing. How could anything be wrong with me? How could I be afraid of anything if Jesus is with me always? Think about it, just think about it. You know what it is? You know, you know what the problem? I'm going to tell you what it is. And no, I don't care about you. You're, gonna be, you're not going to like it. But I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You don't believe he's with you. You don't believe it. I tell you what, if you believe, if, if you still, if you don't believe, either, either you don't believe he is with you or you don't know really who he is. Amen. One or the other. Either you don't believe he is with you or you don't know who he really is. But watch this. If you believe and know who Jesus really is, and if you honestly believe that he is always with you, then you'll be different. Amen. I can assure you that. I assure you that. I'm telling you. See, people, this thing is real. It's real. It's real. He said, why would he say that? 
Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content. Don't be stewed up about nothing with such things as you have. For he himself, Jesus, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Next verse. So we may do what? Holy what? The Lord is and what? Ah! See, I told you you didn't believe it. I told you you didn't believe it. Don't get mad. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Just go meditate it until you believe it. See, just because you can quote it don't mean you believe it. See, I think that's what people mess up. With. You know, you know, you know just, just this mental set. You know, I say, I say, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you don't. The thing that proves whether or not you believe it or not is what are you doing. See, I told you I don't ask people if they're walking in faith. I don't ask them. I don't ask them. I don't have to. Stick around them a five, stick around them a few minutes. I'll find out exactly what you believe, whether you're in faith or not. I don't have to ask you. I just be around you for a few minutes and I'll know whether you're in faith or not. Jesus said, I won't ever leave you nor forsake you. And now, now, now it's time for you to respond to that. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can you do to me? You, Nothing. <laughs> no, no, listen, listen, listen. People, people, people. You know, God is just good. And he makes things so wonderful for us. And, and we... Uh, I don't know, what, what is it? Why, don't, why is it that we're so hard for us to believe God? Why is it? Because, see, see, see listen, I, listen, I know everybody say they do, but you don't. We say we do, but you don't. I bet you if I pull everybody out one by one and pull you to the side and ask you, yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> no, but I'm, telling, I'm being honest with you. Listen. I'm talking to me too. Oh, when I Amen. preach, Amen. I'm the first one to feed off my preaching. Come on. Amen. I tell you right now. See, people don't believe No, I'm, I'm eating just like you are. I, I feed on my own preaching. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I, I eat this first. No, no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If you look at if you listen to the word of God, he said, so you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I know that because he already, Jesus, and Jesus cannot, he's not in the line business. In fact, he can't lie. Amen. He can't lie. And he told me that he would never leave me. He told me, he said, I will never leave you. 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 I am in Christ. I, I live in Christ. I'm in him and he's in me. I'm in him and he's in me. I, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. Now, you can go out here in this world and you can put the devil under your foot where he belongs and look at him right in his eye and say, well, you can't do nothing to me, dog. You can do what can man do to me? Nothing. You can't do nothing to me. Don't even tell me what I'm going to do to you. I'll laugh at you. But, but, you, but you, understand, you understand what we're talking about here. Now, you say, well, well Pastor, I, I know I, I say, you know, I'm just, I say I believe it, but I don't really believe it. How can I really believe it? Just keep feeding it into your heart. Just keep doing it. Just keep saying it. Just keep, keep saying it. 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 Faith come by hearing. Faith come by hearing. And, and the hearing that you really need to hear is your mouth saying it. The hearing that you need to hear is your mouth saying, Thank you, good for you to hear me say it, but you need to hear your mouth say, I'm not afraid of anything. You need to hear your mouth say that. You need to hear your mouth say, I will, be, I will not fear. You need to hear your mouth say, I will not. You need to hear your mouth say it. You don't just need me to read that to you. But you need to say it out of your mouth. I will not fear. I will not allow sickness to rape my body. Uh, you, need to, you, you, need, you need to hear your mouth say that. You need to hear your mouth say, I will not let sickness be in my, into my body. I will not. Sickness, you won't live in my body. You won't live in me. 
Fear, you won't live in me. You need to hear you say that. Now, if you also, if you're too sophisticated to say it, then I'm, that, that's you. Watch this. You need to listen to you. You need to hear you need to hear you say it, and you need to hear you say it out loud. Amen. Now you, you don't need to be around nobody. Don't, don't worry about don't, don't, you don't need to, don't worry about being around nobody. Because this is for you. <laughs> this is for you. I've been talking to me all the time. I've been often talking to me. God. I talk to me, I'll talk, I'll talk to me. In fact, it's good when ain't nobody around me. I can just talk. Because oh, yeah. now if I if you around me, you got I gotta explain to you what I'm doing. <laughs> so, 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 no, because otherwise you think I'm a little. So I like it when there's nobody around. I, hear, I let make me, I make me hear my own voice. That's why my faith comes. And now I'm persuaded and I'm convinced and devils run from me. That's what they do. They see me coming, they go the other way. They see me coming, they go the other way. They don't, they don't, I don't, they go the other way. Yeah. You, you understand why? Because you, you see, your see, the, it's the faith of it's the faith of God. See, that's why the devil knew Paul, and that's why he knew Jesus. Yeah, right. It wasn't the way Paul looked; the way that why the devil knew him. Oh, that's right. It wasn't the way that wasn't it, no, 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 wasn't it? He knew what was coming out of Paul's mouth. Amen. Paul had straightened him out time and time again. Amen. Yeah, ab absolutely. He had straightened him out. Yeah, you, you understand. You need to hear you say it. The words, you need to hear you say it. You need to hear you say that the Lord is with me. Jesus won't ever leave me. And I will not fear. I, you need to hear you say it. So you get the word in your heart. God, the way God trained me, he would have me to memorize scriptures. So I didn't have to go find the Bible to say it. To say what the word says. God trained me. He trained me that way. God, taught, God was my trainer. I tell you who was my trainer. He was my trainer. Amen. And he taught me, God taught me how to memorize scriptures. Praise God. In the early days of, in the early days. You know, when you get when you get when you get saved, you get, get full of God, and you know you, nobody can hold you down. Yeah. Yeah. You got no wisdom. I didn't have, I didn't have no wisdom at all. I just all oh, I didn't have no wisdom. <laughs> I just, I just, no wisdom, you know what I mean? Just scaring folks off and all of that. <laughs> but you get like that. But then, you know, God will calm you down and you get some sense. You know, but, but, but God trained me. He trained me how to memorize the word of God and how to put the word of God in me. And he trained me and taught me. He gave me mentors that taught me how to spend time in my, on my knees, yeah. how to pray, how to pray, how to pray, just get in there and pray, pray, mm -hmm. seek God. And he also taught me how to turn my plate down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't like to hear that one. I know we don't like to hear that one. <laughs> you mean turn your plate down? Quit eating! <laughs> Men, it's so hard to understand. <laughs> Now I found out, I tell you, when, I, when God taught me how to quit eating, I tell you, I fixed a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. I fixed my wardrobe. I fixed my health. I fixed a lot of stuff when I quit eating. Dear Lord, I didn't know it. Amen. I was carrying a lot of excess weight Amen. unnecessarily. And God told me, he told me, you need to quit that, son. <laughs> So I went right at it. I went right at it. I made. I wasn't me. I shut me down. I shut me down. Now I don't tell people to do what I did. I just shut me down. I wouldn't eat. I just because see, people always try to make excuses for eating. You know that. You know that, don't you? Well, I got gland problems and all that kind of stuff. No, you got no gland problems. You got eating problems. No, I'm saying people do this. I've heard that. I've heard it. Listen, you got to eat food to get fat. You cannot get fat without eating food. I have never seen anybody get fat without eating food. But God told me how to, he showed me how to quit that. And, somebody, and bro, he broke me. He showed me, actually, he showed me how to break my flesh. I had to break it. I broke my flesh. Now, I don't tell people to do it the way I did it. When I broke mine, I wouldn't give me nothing. I wouldn't even give me a drink of water. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do what I don't, because see, you go up and say, Pastor told me not to drink no water. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now. But I just, that's what I did to me. I wouldn't, I would give me food and a drink for just over a period, certain period of time. Then I just give me a little something. You know, and just, break, once you break, you know what, once you break the habit of your flesh, you got it. Now, eating nothing but a big, that's about a habit. Just like smoking cigarettes and smoking dope and pot and all that. It's the same. It's a habit. 
And you get to eat and eat, I mean, just eat and eat all this food. But it'll do wonders for your health. That did for mine, you know. But, but, but my point in saying that is the Word of God goes inside of you and then develops you like that. But you got to put it inside. You got to put the Word inside of you. Nobody else can do that for you. I can minister to you here, but if you go back home and turn on Days of Our Lives, that's not, that, you, just, you just throw it right on back at the door. You kick it right back out the door. No, you're going to have to put the word inside of your, your spirit. You've got to do that. No, really, that's the truth. But I think people, people think, you know, just because they went to church, they're all right. No, you're not. All you, would, all you did when you went to church was to find out what to do. And you go back home in business as usual. Every time you come, it's going to be the same. And the devil is going to live with you and control you and destroy you. 2 Timothy, 2, 2 Timothy 1 9. God is God is the one that calls us. Who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus. If you are a Christian, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are called. Amen. There's no such thing as an insignificant Christian. There's no such thing as that. Every, ch every child God has is special to him. You know, it's just like your kids. Do you, do you have, now, now I don't know, I don't know how many kids you have, but, but is there something better than the other one? No, they're all the same. Yeah. I come out of a clan of us, 10 of us, and all of us were the same. Well, if, 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 you know, we, we got the same things. M Mom and dad didn't, didn't treat one of us better than the other because we all belonged to, to Norman and in, in the Austin. Amen. You, you follow me? Amen. Well, God's kids, God don't have no insignificant children. Every, every individual that acknowledges Jesus Christ as his or her Lord is a special child to Almighty God. Amen. You need to know that because one of the things that the devil does, he robs people by taking away their self-esteem. Yes. Yes. A lot of young people get caught up in that. They don't think they much. You know, they think they're ugly. They think they're bad. They think they're this and that. No, child, you're special. God made you just like that because he wanted just one of you. Amen. He didn't want no two of you. Amen. You, don't see, but you don't see two of nothing in this earth that's, uh, that's identical. Even what they call twins. Mm -hmm. Everyone is unique within himself. Yes. Don't you smell a rat? Don't you see, don't you, can't you see why God made you unique like that? Because he, he wanted you to be just like that. Mm -hmm. right. Now you see this whole mess that the devil got going on here. Got people go cutting themselves up and chopping off this and cutting off that and putting this on, trying to look like somebody else. If God wanted you to look like that, he'd have made you like that. Amen. He made you special. You are special. And you need to know that just the way you are, you are special because God made you special. He would even give you someone else's fingerprints. Right. Yours. That's right. You are unique within yourself. Yes, and you need to understand that. That's right. That's right. The devil lined the people. God told you, I, I, I read what I read about in Revelation. He said, that thing coming down there, you better watch him. Yeah. He's coming down there. He's coming with a line on his tongue. You are this, you are that, you are this. If you was like this, then you would be all right. If you was like so-and-so, if you lived over here, if you lived there, then you'd be better. Come on, you better pack up and move down here. You move over there. Quit that! God has, listen to the word of God, I want to read it to you again. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Now listen to me real good. If God has saved you and called you and has a purpose for you, then you are exactly the way he wants you to be. Amen. Amen. And you need to accept the calling and come before God and say, okay, let's get on with it. Amen. God called me to do this day to establish this work here 30 years ago. Yes, sir. He didn't tell me to go try to make it like Reverend so-and-so's church. He didn't tell me to do that. He, got, he already got rid of so-and-so's church. He don't need another one of them. Yes, right. He called me to come here, and I didn't know where Lakehurst was. I didn't know, what, what, what's the Lakehurst? <laughs> now, I'm being, I'm being truthful, which I didn't know nothing. <laughs> I used to live in Red Bank. Mm -hmm. He said, where is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
My point is that I, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know no, I know nothing about down here. I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing. Zilt. I didn't hardly know it existed. And God picked me up and brought me down here and sent me down here. 1977. And placed me here. Sent me to a little church out there in the woods. I didn't know such places. I didn't know where is this? What is that? What's a community church? Little community Baptist church. Everybody remember? Some of you are young. And uh, he sent me out there. And I'm like, what's this? And that's what, that's what he, I, but, but here's my point. Here's my point. I'm just following God. And he placed me there, and he placed me there, and then when, time, when the right time came, then he told me to come here, and he sent me down here, and I come and we bought this property here, and we built this facility and started it. I did, y'all just as strange to me as I am to you. I had no idea. I know, <laughs> what is this? What is this? My point is that when God saves you, but, my, but this, that, that verse there is for every child he has. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. Every child he has. See, this is what I tell, I tell Christians this. When Christians are running around because they go somewhere and, they, and everything they won't quite, anything they don't work quite work out like they think they should, and somebody not doing what they think they should do, and they run somewhere. I said, what's wrong with you? What you doing? You know, you, you smarter than God. You're going to place yourself. You better stop and listen to God. And where God placed you, you better say thank you and go to work. God places the members in the body as it pleases him. You don't get to run around and decide where you're going to go and what you're going to do. God places the members in the body as it pleases him. And you need to be thankful enough to say thank you that you have accepted me enough to place me where I should be and now I'm willing to labor in your, in your vineyard. On, that's what I'm talking about, yeah, folks. That's it. That's it. When we understand these principles and get serious about our calling, then all the mess that's been distracting you is going to fall off you like water running off of a duck's back and you're going to be able to get about God's business. Many are struggling because you're just, you're just all out of salt. God didn't call you to struggle like that. He called you to obey his voice, connect with him and be obedient and love one another and forgive one another the way he has called and designed you to. Forgiving and loving one another is not optional. It's a, quality, it's a, it's a, it's a demand from the head of the church. So God saved us. He called us with the holy calling. Now once he called you, then he equips you. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He tells you exactly who your enemy are. Your neighbor is not your enemy. Now, I know you think so. Your coworker is not your enemy. I know you think so. Your boss is not your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. God told you to love and forgive people. And that should be the first order of the day. You all remember Ephesians 4, 32? Yes. Be kind to one another. Yes. Go ahead, put it on the hole, put it on the board. And be kind to one another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ has forgiven you. You remember that one? It, that's, 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 that's what he meant. Now, you don't, no, you don't get a chance to like who you want to like and, like and dislike who you want to dislike. You don't, get, you don't get that luxury. You don't get the luxury of forgiving who you want to forgive and not forgiving who you don't want to forgive. You don't get that luxury. Be kind to one another. Tend to because that's the qualifier for the fulfillment of your calling. Yes, sir. Come on, people. Let's, let's get real with this thing. That is the qualifier for the fulfillment of your calling. If you reject this, then you're not going to fulfill your calling. And then you're going to have to answer to Jesus. And I really don't want to be in that meeting. People, this, I believe that this is one of the major areas of, of many of the believers on the earth now. We have not learned... To, we, have not, we have not learned the art of being kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving one another. 
Let me tell you something about forgiving. Number one, it'll shut you down, it'll keep you sick. It'll shut down your ministry and it'll keep you sick. Because you can't, because sickness and unforgiveness don't go together. I mean, health, health and unforgiveness don't go together. Health and unforgiveness. Remember what Jesus said? And when you stand praying, do what? Ha, 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 ha. No, come on, people. See, this, this forgiveness, this is, is something that, that you have to choose to do. It is not something that you have the power to do. Get this, I get this now. You don't have the power to do anything. It's the grace of God and Holy Spirit that lives inside of you that gets everything done. But they operate according to your will. You understand this? See, you have to choose. You got to choose and say, God, God, I choose to forgive. I'm, I'm, I'm a forgiver. I choose to do that. And I will forgive. Now, I don't know if you ever heard people talk like this, but it's, 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 a sad, it's a sad conversation when you hear things like, you know, I just can't forgive so-and-so. I just can't. For, I just can't. I, you, are, you are announcing your death sentence. That's a death sentence that you're announcing to own yourself. When you stand up and say, I just can't forgive. I just can't. I, and I've heard that. I just can't. I just, I just can't forgive. I know, ah, man, you don't know what they did to me. I don't even care. What did Jesus do? Well, it, was a, it was one of the last orders of business prior to him shedding his blood for you. And he, the last thing, he says, Father, forgive them. Now, if you notice, Ephesians 2, 4.32 says, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Do you see how God in Christ forgave you? Amen. That means he didn't wait for you to do something for him to forgive you. He forgave you before you got on this planet. Yes, sir. God, that's good. Amen. When you got here, mm. the slate was clean. Yes, sir. All you had to do was find out about it. See, that's, a, that's the only problem. That's, 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 that's the only thing. See, people have to find out. See, see, until you find out about it, you can't walk in it. You can't walk in the forgiveness until you find out you've been forgiven. And when you don't know Jesus, you don't know you've been forgiven, so you just act like a fool. But when you find out that you have been forgiven, then you take on the same nature and you forgive others as God in Christ has forgiven you. And you, the slate is clean and your healing will spring forth like the noonday. Hallelujah. You'll walk in divine health. That's where I live. I, I, walk, I, live, I walk in divine health. Yeah. Because I'm a forgiver. I don't grudge. No, I'm not going to hold a grudge against you. I will. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, your mouth's involved in this process too. Right. It's going to cut your conversation into half. Mm. Watch this. Listen to me. When you develop the spirit, when you begin to cultivate the spirit of forgiveness, it's going to cut your talking in half. Yes, because I guarantee the, mo the most of your talking is about somebody else. Which indicates you have not forgiven them. Mm. Come on. Oh. <laughs> See, when you run your mouth off about somebody, talk about what somebody did or this, that, or the other, you are saying, I haven't forgiven them for it. Because if you had forgiven them, why would you say anything about it? Mm. See? Did you see that short dress she had on today? Let me ask you something. Did you forgive her for wearing that short dress? Mm. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Well, then what you talking about there? Mm. You understand what we're talking about here? See, this forgiveness thing is big, but you got to understand it. That's the way God forgave you. Amen. As God in Christ forgave you. You love people. People that you love, you don't talk about them. People that you love, the only thing you say about them is something to compliment them. I learned something about people, some of the old saints years ago. If they didn't say something nice, they wouldn't say anything. You have to learn to do that. You develop 
your mouth. Because death and life lie in the tongue. It'll produce one or the other. It'll produce life for you or it'll produce death for you. And many Christians are dying on the vine because of their mouth. Have not learned the art of being kind and being tenderhearted and forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. That's where we are. You want to walk in divine health? Learn to forgive. Amen. You want to walk in divine health? Be tenderhearted. Forgive. See, that's the key. See, see, unforgiveness clocks the line. If you, you want, it clocks up the line. But when you forgive, <coughs> watch this. If everybody forgave everybody right now, Jesus could be here before sundown. If, he, if, if, if everybody forgave everybody, there's, nothing, there's no reason for Jesus not to be instantly here to pick you up. Well, I decided this. I'm going to forgive. So at least I'm going to get it started. Amen. I'm going to forgive. And then the people that I talk to, I'm going to ask them about doing the same thing. So why don't, I, so why don't we do this? Can you imagine if everybody in this church forgave everybody? Be a nice little, nice little chunk. That'd be a nice, be, be, be pretty nice, wouldn't it? Amen. Is there any reason why everybody in this church cannot forgive everybody right now? It's a choice. That's all it is. It's a choice. It's a choice. I choose to forgive everybody. So therefore, from this point forward, I will never say anything ill about anyone. Wow. Now, husband and wife do this. They 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 are very guilty of this. I'm, I'm at me. I'm, husband and wife are very guilty of this. Because they are, they, are, they are got it so bad, they will say bad things about one another that they won't say to other people. They call themselves getting stewed up, saying stuff derogatory to one another that they would not say to a stranger. Amen. I give myself an amen on that one. And they ain't going to play it off and wonder why they can't get healed. They're going to play it off and act like, wonder why I can't get healed. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show a scripture there. I'm going to show it to you in the scripture. You think you're so smart. I'm going to show you why. Hey, pray for me. For what? You ain't going to get healed because you you got unforgiveness in you. <laughs> See, I know that's a tough one, isn't it? Listen, listen to this, listen to this. Now, you know angels are involved in the affairs of the believers. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. Now, listen to God, listen to this instruction here. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. That's what God has done for you. You know that, don't you? Now, watch this. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgression. Amen. Angels are involved in the affairs of your life. Over in, over in Psalms, he says, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they excel in strength, and they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. Yes. That's what angels do. They are ministering spirits. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation? Amen. They're the ones that are sent forth to protect you. And I'm, I'm ahead of myself, but that's okay. They're the ones that are sent forth to protect you and to keep all you from all hurt, harm, or danger. Yes. But if your tongue is out of whack, mm. they are obedience in assisting you in your daily affairs is determined by the words of your mouth. You think I'm yanking your chain? Turn on to Psalms 103. Just mark, jot down all the scriptures and put them together and then go home and study them out for yourself. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. I, I'm really glad that God depicts the angels the way they really are. 
and not knowing some little, little fat baby with little flappy wings. That's man's idea. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. Now listen, listen, listen to this. This is how they respond. Who do his word. What do you mean they do his word? They do the word of God that they hear coming out of the mouth of the believer. Amen. The words that come out of your mouth is going to determine how active the angels are in your life. Amen. Are you still here? You say, oh, 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 how come that guy ran into that tree? I don't know. Don't put me in that. I'm not running into no tree. <laughs> My angel is going to protect me from it. Amen. I'm not running into no tree. I said, I'm not running into no tree. Amen. You said, you awful cocky about that. I, I, that's right. Word. Just what you think. Word. I know what's coming out of my mouth. Yes. I was driving down the Garden State Park. We went Saturday morning, just minding my own business. And uh, I was way down, I was way down, way down there, way down just before you get into Atlantic City area. And all of a sudden, I'm just minding my own business in the left lane. All of a sudden, I looks up and I see a car on my side coming straight at me. The devil said, gotcha. And all of a sudden, my car is like, ooh, over here in the right lane. And this guy goes right past me. If you drive, and I'm clipping along six or seven miles per hour. If you clip along six or seven miles, and this guy is doing better than that. It don't take you long to meet you, though. Because you got to first, first off, because when you see something like that, you don't see it. You know, by the time you do that, you, you know, it's too late. But uh, by the time I did this, I'm, I'm over here. And, and it kind of goes right, right past. Amen. Well, 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 how did that happen? Well, they didn't, my car is not that heavy for an angel. They excel in strength, you know. Amen. He just picked my car up, sent me over there, and this guy went right past me. What in the world he's doing, I have no idea. What, I never heard anything like I heard ever heard anything about it. I, I've heard other people test about stuff like that, people being in the wrong lane like that. I don't know. You know, you guys might have uh, heard a lot of that kind of stuff when you was out there on the highway. But, but, but I, I don't know. But I know one thing, the devil wants to use that to kill you with. Because oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I don't know, how do you even get on the wrong side of the road? Amen. You got, it takes effort. But it takes effort. You just can't be drunk and get over there. You got to know what you're doing. <laughs> to get on the wrong side of the Garden State Parkway. Amen. The exits are not even designed for you to do that. Amen. And you can't, you can't cross the barrier. <laughs> How do you get over there? Mm. That devil will make a way for you. Because <laughs> he, he wants to kill you. I say this because, see, we need to understand this. This is not just preaching. Amen. This is the word of God. Angels are part of my everyday activities. They go with me every day. And their activities in my life is determined by the words of my mouth. The Bible says they hearken or they listen to the words. Listen, look at it. They listen, heeding the voice of God's word. What the voice of the, the words that come out of my mouth, the angels, they hear that. And when I'm talking faith, see, when I say the angels watch over me, that, that, to you that may sound arrogant, but to them it's wonderful. They like to hear it. Because they get, they get on it. When I say, ain't no evil going to befall me, ain't no plague coming near my dwelling, they get right on it. They get right on it. They like to hear that. But if I'm saying, man, I, I'm scared. I don't know. Man, ooh. They can't do a thing. They can do absolutely nothing. That's when, because fear will kill you. Well, the, way, the reason that the fear is so, is so, 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 can so easily kill you because your angels can't do anything with fear coming out of your mouth. Amen. See, with fear coming out of your mouth, angels can't respond to that. They hearken unto the voice of the word of God. Not the voice of unbelief. Amen. You better get a hold of that. Yes, now, it brings us to the last section, and we've got to shut it down, but, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. John 17, 5, 15. I do not pray for you, for you. I do not pray that you should be taken out of the world, 
but that you should be kept, that you should keep them from the evil one. Jesus is praying for, the, for us. He says, Father, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. They're, they're, they're just because the world is doing that's all they know. And it's, it's chaos down there because Satan is already down there. I read that to you. Satan is already down there running around doing everything he can to destroy everything and everybody. And he says, Father, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. But I'm asking you to keep them from the evil one. See, I don't, see, I don't care. See, everything that's going on there doesn't bother me in the least. God has promised to keep me from it. He's, he's promised to keep me from it. And the angels are present to make sure that no hurt, harm, or danger. I believe that. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put no buts to it. I don't put no what ifs to it. I just simply believe God. Because Jesus prayed this prayer. Come on, folks. See, we're going to have to either believe God or we just have to go do something else. But listen to this. Listen to what he says. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Yeah. Now, let me ask this question. Did God answer Jesus' prayer? Do you think that? Yeah. You know he did. Well, then how can any hurt harm when it come to me? Come on, man. Come on. You understand? What? See, I'm telling you. See, we want to. I don't know how. I, I don't know if we want, we want to. I don't know if we're too sophisticated. I don't know what it is. Why are we so hard for us to believe God? Mm. Come on. You either believe the Bible or you don't. Amen. And you're going to believe in God. Christianity is radical. Amen. Now, no, no, you know, you, you say, but I don't want to act like, I don't want to look like a, Amen. no. This is radical. Yes, it is. Amen. Spiritual warfare is radical. Yes, yes, Come on. When Paul led their preaching and they threw rocks at him until they killed him, there was no Sunday afternoon picnic. They threw rocks at him until they killed him. When Shadrach, Meshach is standing up there and they say, I'm not bound to the thing. And they pick him up and throw him in the fire. That is not a picnic. That's real. You understand what we're talking about? Peter is in jail. And Herod said, I'm killing you tomorrow. And he know he ain't joking because he just killed John. He know he's not joking. This guy goes to sleep. Come on. Are we a part of a different church? No. This is the same church that we're in today. And it's time for the Christians to become radical in what we believe. This is not a time to Turn coward and cave in. Amen. But it's time for us to rise to the occasion. Yes. Either I believe this mm. or I don't. Mm. I choose to believe God. the word of God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I choose to believe the word of God. Amen. Either it works or it won't. I choose to believe. Father, I pray for this people. I pray for every soul in this room right now. God, you have opened a door for us. You said go into this world and preach this gospel to every creature. Those that believe and are baptized, they'll be saved. Those that do not believe, they'll be condemned. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. If you're in this room today and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus today.